Nightmare Alley was one of this year's Oscar nominees for Best Picture. I feel it is a film well worth your time, you should check it out, but here are my thoughts. Hi, my name's Drew and welcome to another review video on Flying Vina. I did mention this in a past video that I wanted to see Nightmare Alley and it is actually still on in cinemas here. It's just that it's usually at very, very bad times also because I want to see it in English and there aren't that many English cinemas in Vienna. But lucky me, it was released on Disney Plus so I had <laughs> the leisure of just watching it in my home. It is a, a really nice film, uh, I like it a lot, but there are some issues I have with it, we'll come to those later. It obviously did not uh, win at the Oscars, that honour instead went to uh, Coda, which I haven't seen, it's only on Apple TV+. Plus. I'd like to see it, also because I'm very interested in it, I just have no interest in getting Apple TV, I've already got so many subscriptions, so I do hope they'll release that at some point on Blu-ray or something so that I can go and get it. But speaking of the Oscars, just to very briefly announce the big slap that happened. <laughs> I'm in the camp of pretty much any joke is fine with me. Obviously you need to know your audience and whether they are into that kind of humour or not. Personally, I don't think it was that, I mean it wasn't the best joke ever, but it was fine. Uh, obviously going after the comedian with a slap or any other form of physical violence is not okay. I'm quite shocked actually also because I really like Will Smith. I know he's not had the best career in terms of really, really noteworthy films. Generally, I still enjoyed watching them, so I always feel it's a bit sad when you have these people that you enjoy seeing and they do something that's really, really horrible. You know, it's really, really strange and the more you think about it, the weirder it gets that later on he even received an Oscar, he wasn't kicked out. All these things, you know, it's broadcast all over the world. It's just such a strange situation to be in. Anyway, let's return to Nightmare Alley. Guillermo del Toro is a director I really, really like. I particularly enjoyed the last film he made, Shape of Water, uh, which was also an Oscar film. It went on to win not only Best Picture, but also uh, Best Director for Guillermo del Toro. Really great film. And this film to me, it feels like it can go very well with it. It kind of has a similar flair and definite look and aesthetic to it. Generally, it's quite interesting. Both films, I feel, remind me a lot of the Bioshock games, at least the first two. So if they ever do make a Bioshock film, I believe they should hire Guillermo del Toro, at least as a producer, you know, to... Uh, sort of watch over the whole thing. It's just that the, the whole office buildings and all these kind of things, it really, really looks like the world in Bioshock does. So I really like the world he's created here. It also looks beautifully, just the cinematography, it's really good. I mean, we do have quite uh, dulled colours, I'll call them, so it's all very muted, but it really just fits the whole atmosphere of the film of Nightmare Alley. But what is this film even about? Let's start there, <laughs> as we usually do. Um, the film is about uh, a drifter, grifter, he's played by Bradley Cooper uh, and he he starts working for a circus, a sort of uh, sideshow thing where they've got freaks and all these kind of attractions that people come to watch. He starts working there just very, very lowly at first, just you know, carrying things about, then he meets people there and they start teaching him all about their craft, illusions and how they, they trick people or entertain them. Depending on your viewpoint, I suppose it's either trickery or entertainment. Can be both, of course. And he gradually learns their craft. Uh, and after a while, he, together with a, with a woman who he meets there, played by Rooney Mara, they leave together. They go to the city, uh, I believe it's Boston, if I'm not mistaken. And there, he really stages a much bigger show. So he really wants to become this illusionist and, uh, you know, he can tell what people have in their hands, which items they're holding, you know, even all these blindfolded. And he takes it more and more to the next level, seemingly just powered by the desire or the greed for money. That's all I'll tell you. As you can imagine, it doesn't go well. <laughs> you can't expect this kind of story to go well. It is not a happy story. I'll point that out straight away. I don't think it is, though, going into I mean, it's even named Nightmare Alley. If you're interested, by the way, it's based on a book that came out in 1946. And there was actually already a film that was made, I think, the year after the book came out. So this isn't uh, uh, an original idea that Guillermo del Toro has. He's based it on a book. And uh, it just generally is not a very 
very nice story. We meet all these characters, chiefly among them uh, you have Willem Dafoe, he plays uh, this sort of uh, director, I suppose you could call it, of this uh, sideshow, this circus sideshow, carnival sideshow. And he in particular, just, you know, he explains a lot about what he does. One of the acts, for instance, that they have, uh, he just uh, grabbed an alcoholic off the streets, you know, and, and constantly uh, sort of feeds them drugs and alcohol, of course, to keep him happy. And, and he is supposed to be this kind of freak, a beast that he keeps in a cage and eats live chickens. So uh, really, really horrible how he treats people. He's got fetuses in a jar and, and all sorts of things. So <laughs> it's not really a happy place to be, but at the same time, uh, it's just a really interesting character to see. I mean, I love watching Willem Dafoe in anything he does, and he's great in this as well. Now, this is slightly spoilerish, uh, although I did mention it uh, b before, but uh, still I feel you should know that uh, roughly about halfway through the two main characters, uh, so Bradley Cooper and Rooney Mara, they leave this site, which I feel is a shame. They go to the city and while their stuff becomes more and more grand uh, in scale, etc., all their shows, I do feel it's a shame that we don't get to see that environment anymore. I really enjoy that carnival environment and just the people they have. They're really interesting characters. I did actually hope that we would uh, get to see more of them. So I was very disappointed by this departure. I know that it's part of the original story, but still um, I'm, I just would have enjoyed staying with them a lot more and just seeing something more developed there. So I feel they could have just kept them there. Uh, have Bradley Cooper's character have his show that develops over time and he becomes a more and more important figure. Actually, I think you could have turned that into an, into an interesting situation where he comes into conflict with the other people there, particularly Willem Dafoe, because he wants to take over, because he's the big act and all these kind of things. And also so many other interesting characters and actors. You've got Tony Collette, you've got Ron Perlman. So you've got many interesting actors in here that just sort of fell off, you know, halfway through the film, which uh, I felt was quite a shame. Another thing is, and that's probably because uh, we have this shift halfway through, the film is a bit too long in my opinion. So it's two and a half hours long, I mean, and granted in the second half we have the introduction of Kate Blanchett, she comes in, she plays a, a wholly different character than what we had in the first half, so she's not some kind of illusionist or something, she's a psychiatrist. I won't explain how she comes into the whole thing, you should find that out for yourself, but she is a big part in the second half. And because of this, uh, we have a whole nother setup with different situations and that. I feel like we, lo we lose a lot of time, you know, just setting up a whole different angle of this whole story. I feel they should have just kept uh, the circus and tried integrated these parts in the second half more into that. I would, surrounding etc. I would have enjoyed that more. But where the film really shines is the acting, of course, as I mentioned, we have so many brilliant actors. Bradley Cooper in particular, he obviously has the most screen time. We also even have changing accents from him, so when they move to the city, you know, he wants to appear more worldly, I suppose you could call it, because he does end up being in high society, so he wants to sound and, and act more noble in that way, and uh, just watching him on screen was a real treat. But everyone else, Rooney Mara does a great job, Kate Blanchett, Tony Collette, they all do great jobs. I mean, the wonderful actors that Guillermo del Toro has selected here, and besides the acting, you also should mention the music. And with that, just as I already mentioned <laughs> more to the beginning, the look of this film. The sets are amazing. Again, I would have loved to see more of the sideshow, the carnival, because the set pieces are just so wonderful. There's so much detail in them, so much love has been put into crafting them, and it all just looks amazing. The music goes so well with it. So you really, while the film is not a happy one, uh, you really enjoy just being there. You feel like you're there the whole time. Also, because Guillermo del Toro, I've never noticed that he does this, I'll be honest. <laughs> I really noticed in this film, uh, the camera is never steady, so the camera always has slight movement. You know, even when we're just focused on a person talking, the camera will be moving slightly one way or the other. You really feel like you're there, you know, that you're experiencing the whole thing along with the characters. Never noticed this before, oh, but you're a critic. Well, yeah, but I do like to say still that I'm a lay person, you know, I don't... <laughs> make films myself, I haven't studied filmmaking etc. So I do discover a lot of these things as I go. 
and this is one of them and uh, I'll definitely be uh, looking for that in the future but there's just a lot of movement in it and I really like it because it's not it's not what I mean by movement it's not it's shaky it's not shaky cam or anything we have really just nice slow cinematic movements and they just really emphasize things that happen in the scene or emotions they draw your attention to various things it's really nice and i really enjoy it so visually this is a wonderful film i do highly recommend that you see it i i'm fine with it not winning best picture because while i haven't seen coda uh, or a few others of the nominees i don't feel like this was the best film it is certainly a very enjoyable film while being a bit depressing wonderful to look at incredible actors i would definitely recommend that you see it that'll be all from me today if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. It's the best way to support this channel. Leave a comment down below if you've seen the film, what you liked about it, or if you disliked something about that, put it there as well. Any and all opinions you have, please share them. I'll thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video on Flying Vina. Take care.